Hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another video. So, I've been hinting at a type of series that I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, and today I felt like, why not start on it? I kind of wanted to start up a series talking about the psychology of color. It's a weird topic to discuss when you don't really think about it, but realistically, your favorite color can actually say a lot more about your personality than you might think. I'll give an example as a start video. Today, I'm going to be talking about the color blue. Now, why blue? Well, originally, when I was a preteen and younger, that was actually my favorite color. It's not anymore. As of right now, it's red. But we'll get to that color a different day. Thinking back on it and thinking to how I used to be and how I am now does kind of make sense when it matches up to this. So what exactly is the psychology of the color itself? What does it represent? Well, blue is a color of calmness and relaxation, one of several. But it's kind of the major one that focuses on it. It's also the color, it, to be more direct, it's more of a color of an eased nerve system. Now, when you think the color blue is kind of a downer color, you think of sadness. But realistically, to support the claim I'm stating, sadness, that particular color is actually, it's represented by blue, but why? If blue is such a calming color, then why? Well, there's a reason I said the ease of nerve. When you get sad and you start crying, you're letting out any negative energy. You're letting it, you're releasing, simmering down. It's the same thing with anger, except anger, it doesn't mellow it, it exerts it. Mellowing it makes you ball, makes you down, makes you sad, makes you cry. And in the process of doing that, eases away the sad, bringing back the good, but in a more relaxed, believe it or not, kind of way. Figured I'd clarify that one particular aspect, because blue, when people think of the color blue, they think about that a lot. But let's go about this at a different angle. Business. The colors of places like Walmart, um, Lowe's, Sam's Club, um, let's see what others are there. I'm sure there are several out there. Actually, Microsoft. The color blue is the color you see on the icons. Why do they use that? Well, it's a color to make them feel more relaxed and comforted atmospherically. If you're to approach a target, color red, versus a Walmart, color blue, which are you more likely to spend more time in? Realistically, the answer to that is actually Walmart for the most part. Sure, there are some people who actually do the reverse, where color dumb mean crap, but those who get attracted to places like Walmart will actually take their time and go, okay, what do we need? Take a breather, take things slow, and actually take their time to gather what they need and slowly go as they need, rather than just boom, boom, gone. In the cases of other places, um, where as like it's like the opposing of red, which once again we'll get more detail later. Red does the opposite, but on a business perspective, it's to give comfort, to allow them to take their time, be at ease of mind. This is not noticed very often, but here's another piece of evidence. How many people out there do yoga? Or meditation. How often, for those who do, 
how often do you see like the mats or the rooms or anything like that be of the color purple or red or green? It's rare. Sometimes the areas will be very, vi very vibrant, but that's usually when it's several colors. But when it's one definitive color, there is a reason a lot of it takes place outside during a clear, sunny day. The sky is freaking blue. When it's in a room, it's either white or blue. Once again, because of the calmness and the ease of mind factor. The psychology behind the color blue in result, it's just because of the fact that it's a very calming and very mellow color. Now it's not the only one out there, granted. But what defines the psyche behind that color is definitely calmness ease. That's an interesting factor. The first thing that got me into thinking about this in the first place, a few years ago I watched a film theory, in case it's not obvious, by the film theorists based around the anime Red v. Blue. And that theory based around the difference between who would go with, oh, sorry, who would go with what and why? It got into detail about the psyche of colors, specifically red and blue. Since then, I've been contemplating on doing this kind of series. Now that I can, thinking about it, there's a lot more there than just that. How about a relationship status kind of thing? Sure, the calmness sticks, but what does it say about your personality? Well... Bear in mind, the limitation on personality statements, like positively, limits the statements, which means several of the things listed could be for different colors as well. In the case of blue, you have patience that exceeds many more. You're, and if you haven't, if you don't currently, you will. It depends on where you are on the psychosocial stages of development at the time. It could be the case of, for one, you have or you end up having a lot more patience than you may think. Two, you're very understanding. Three, this one I think hits the core several reasons. You connect. You allow yourself to connect with others you may or may not even know. On a psyche standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. I know several people who's fit. Pink Fox, for example. Blue. Not our favorite, but it is up there because of Stitch. Stitch himself, actually, from Lilo and Stitch. What do they have in, what, what, what does this character have in common with what I've said? Connections. Adaptivity understanding, and in the long haul, patience. A lot of these factors do sign, do check in with a lot of people I met. A lot. And it makes sense to me. With that being said, though, this is the psychological front of the color. This is the psychology of the color blue. Think I missed anything? Let's look. Whoa, excuse me. Holy cow. It's like half a cough, half a sneeze. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments below. Maybe there's some stuff that could be added to this. Now, bear in mind, as I'm talking about these psychology of colors, I'm not going to add any negative factors. Every single one of these have neg cons to them, but that's not why I'm talking about it. I'm talking about the pros only the ups about these psyches. But once again, if I did miss anything on that side of it, let us know in the comments below. 
if you have a high interest in this kind of stuff, why not click link on this side of my head? You will eventually see a list of the different Psychology of Colors uh, playlist. As I said, right now, this is the only one, so you'll probably find a random video over there for now, if you're watching this when it first comes out. If this is not quite the video you're looking for, why not click the link on the other side where you may find something that you might appreciate a little bit more. In the meantime, though, I'm going to head off. Thanks again for tuning in to this video, guys, and we hope to see you all in another one. Catch you guys later.